Birds are a humming on the honeysuckle vine. Sleep, Kentucky, baby. Salmon and a pine and for this little babe of mine. Sleep, Kentucky, baby. Silver moon is shining. Up above, Bob a link and pining for this little lady love. You is mighty lucky, babe from old Kentucky. Close your eyes and sleep. Fly away, Kentucky Bay, fly away to rest. Fly away. Lay your little woolly head on your mama's breast. And, we're, and we wanted to celebrate your bicentennial. I think that's one of our one of our jobs is to call attention to the history of the region and anniversaries, particularly 200th anniversaries, have a way of focusing things. <laughs> 200 years is a long time, and uh, and we want to celebrate that. In our communities, it's the strength of the communities, the strength of the families um, that have maintained. Um, life here for 200 years and life that has developed in a very positive way you know people are good people that's one thing I found coming here people here are are really nice people we want to welcome all of you here to the Hickman County Historical and Genealogical Society my name is Tom Bug we have several of our local members here today and we really appreciate the Jackson Purchase uh, club taking the time to come down and visit us and uh, another chance to get put on the map which is always important for little towns like ours thank you for coming they've, they've asked us uh, to present some information about the bicentennial that we did here in the county which we were very proud of uh, it kind of came up at the last minute nobody was really thinking about it I don't think and then suddenly Somebody, it dawned on them that the 200th anniversary was here, and so uh, pretty much everybody went into high gear to try to get it prepared. Uh, we started out uh, with seeking a, 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 a different uh, way of thinking about what we're doing, and someone came up with a slogan, a view of the past, a vision of the future, 1821 to 2021 for our bicentennial. In terms of the way of getting this sort of thing done, you got to have a planning committee at the front uh, of the thing to get everybody in together and in the same uh, vein. And so what uh, we did, the chamber primarily asked uh, several different people from various organizations, associations, government entities, etc., to send out some folks to be a, a planning committee and we would meet uh, about once a week uh, at different places, usually for lunch, uh, where the uh, particular um, person who was on the planning committee, uh, we usually met in homes, would feed the rest of us, which that was very nice. And uh, so uh, that kind of reminds me of us Baptists, we tend to always want to eat when we're you know, doing something <laughs> like that. So uh, just the way it is. Uh, there were seven of us that finally ended up being the core committee 
uh, that went from place to, from home to home to do the planning, uh, we had, uh, let's see, four women, two black men and me. So we had a fairly diverse group, which uh, I was pleased with when we did that. Getting started. Well, the first thing that we started working on was a kickoff day, which ended up being scheduled for Saturday, September the 21st. We decided to do it on the court square out in the open air. Uh, of course, COVID was still on an issue at the time, but because we were outside and separated, we thought we could get the job done, and, and we had quite a few people. Uh, one of the things that I was supposed to do, and the... Uh, chairman of the committee who happens to be my cousin uh she said i want you to do a short history just a short one short 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 i said okay <laughs> short short well that's what i did and I, and I had several people that were providing me information that they thought was important for for a sort of a short uh kickoff this is what this is how hickman county came about <clears throat> and i had some folks uh that were real uh, uh, graduated historians, uh, some some people who are more folk uh, lore related folks who were providing me information, uh, but then it was supposed to be short, short, short. So uh, that took a little while to figure that out. And then when I did, and we got there, and it was short because that's what Sherry told me to do is make it short. And I, I had another cousin to come before I started speaking and say, well, we came today just to hear you. And I said, well, you're not going to get to hear me much because I was supposed to be short, short, short. So anyway, but we uh, we had the kickoff. Brother Eugene McDonald opened with prayer. Uh, he's a black pastor here in town that we all think an awful lot of. His daughter, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Howard Dillard, who was a councilman here and recently died, his daughter sang the national anthem for us. Barry Patrick, who is a fellow that a lot of people use, he's a fantastic pianist, and uh, uh, his family sings, I think, at some of the churches and things around. He accompanied uh, Miss Dillard when she sang, and he also provided background music before and after uh, the little kickoff meeting there on the court square. Uh, I think a lot of people were excited that we had that much activity around the court square that particular day. Um, then uh, Councilman Howard Dillard that I was just talking about read a proclamation that had been prepared uh, calling attention to and lifting up the issue of our 200th anniversary and at that point uh, the county judge executive Mr. Kenny Wilson uh, we made a big display of him signing that pro proclamation as part of the startup that day um, and then I did my short history but the thing that really was a surprise to me, uh, we have a Methodist, the first Methodist church here in Clinton that has a sort of a carol on that uh, rings the hour and the quarter hour and a half hour and et cetera, and will play music uh, at some of those times throughout the day. Uh, I never really didn't remember hearing it just play bells like you see on TV or something mm -hmm. where they're just ringing bells in the rafters and stuff. Uh, but uh, And then the First Baptist Church here, which was built in 1962 or three, I think we moved in in 63, uh, we used to have a, a loudspeaker system that would ring bells and play music and things like that as uh, people came in to Sunday school, etc. Hadn't heard anything out of that in... I don't know, a long time, maybe 30 years, I don't know. But that day when we, as we finished, as we were finishing this <coughs> outdoor kickoff, uh, Sherry said, well, now everybody wait, don't leave just yet. And all those bells at both, at both uh, churches started ringing. It was the neatest thing. I had no idea that it was going to happen or what she was waiting for, and I don't know how she got it done. Uh, but anyway, it was really neat to to stand on the court square and hear the church bells ringing. That was pretty neat. And I, and I think historically, you know, that's something you think about in older times. Uh, I remember my grandmother, when she lived in the 
in the country had a dinner bell that she would ring to let people know that it was time to come eat. She had it ready. Uh, and um, I'm sure there were a lot of other people that had the same kind of thing. <coughs> After we did our little uh, kickoff on the square, we were uh, very uh, glad to have uh, an antique car show. Now, I've worked in this county trying to get an antique car show since about 1978. And, and we used to have one or two really active members of antique car clubs in this county. And yet, we just almost couldn't get any together. It just, anytime you were the chamber, we try to do it, other associations would try to do it. Well, I'm happy to say that uh, Liz Jewell, uh, who was on the committee, uh, managed somehow to get all kinds of antique cars around the court square in Clinton. It was amazing that she was able to get that many. Many of them, a uh, few of them local, and uh, several of them uh, from other places that, that I didn't know the people. And so after the, after the kickoff, uh, tenants were free to view those cars. And we also had a number of fruit, food trucks available that were around and people had lunch. It was just a really great day and I, I was glad we got started in such a significant kickoff. It wasn't uh, something that was just uh, fly by night. We had uh, countywide activities around the whole county. We have been having an old hymn sing, they call it, for a number of years now. We've missed a year or two with the COVID, and this was one of the years that it, uh, it got canceled. But what we do with the old hymn sing, we invite the different churches and individuals to come in, and uh, several of them perform. Uh, different everything has to be a song printed uh, developed and printed before 1953 I think and so that's what we did uh, and of course uh, some folks remember the Cokesbury hymnal that uh, our grandmothers sang out of and uh, lots of those are used as an old Baptist hymnal that uh, a lot of people have sung out of when they were very young uh, I was and we a lot of those old hymns and things that we remember from those days are sung at that particular celebration which we have annually or have been having annually uh, and we had hoped to make that part of our uh, bicentennial but we didn't quite get to because of the COVID issue uh, one small church that um, was moving to a new location and so they became part of the celebration by having their ribbon cutting on September 26th. Uh, the county observed a county-wide cemetery cleanup with various groups cleaning up various cemeteries in Hickman County. Um, this was neat. Uh, I have grandparents at Salem, which is out on 307 Methodist Church uh, Cemetery. Uh, I have great-grandparents there and great-great-parents there. And then uh, I have uh, great parents, great grandparents at uh, Rock Springs, which is down toward Fulton County. And a lot of those small church cemeteries are struggling to be able to have enough money to mow. Mm -hmm. It's a pretty typical problem, I think. And so one of the things that we did as a, as a county is people went out and started cleaning up some of these old uh, cemeteries. Uh, they went into the Clinton Cemetery here in town, <clears throat> which was not in bad shape because, in fact, it was in pretty, in pretty good shape because the city keeps it up. But they still went in and did some things with regard to some old monuments that maybe were leaning or something, those sort of things. And then they, have a, <clears throat> they had a drive-through, and had, it was very successful. Uh, they had, um, I don't know, uh, hot chocolate and coffee and things for people. <coughs> And we had a whole lot of people that drove through the cemetery there that day. <clears throat> um, the Woman's Club and the local library, which the Woman's Club uh, is kind of the foundation of the local library, <clears throat> hosted a sit spell on the library lawn. We invited people to bring their lawn chairs and blankets and sit on the ground on the blanket. And we had several folks that told stories uh, about the county in earlier days. Uh, 
I know Liz Jewell read from one of her mother's books, uh, Miss Virginia Jewell, which some of you may be aware of. She's a published author, has three or four books, I think, of old tales going way back in Hickman County, and Liz re read one of those. Um, I think that gets that one. Civil War days is big here. Uh, I went down this year. I, I told my wife there was a good crowd, but I don't think it was quite as good as maybe it's been sometimes in the past. Uh, we made a very special attention to that Civil War days, the year of our 200th anniversary. Uh, we had lots of folks involved. Laura Poole, again, one of the members of the steering committee, arranged for a group which she calls the gang. I'm not sure what the gang is, but that's what she called it. To set up an authentic historical kitchen at the main pavilion down at the park. And they were going to cook like in pots over fire and those kind of things and have samples for people who might want to uh, sample the kind of food that would have been eaten at the time that our county was established. So we're talking 1821. And that, that was part of Civil War Days um, that particular year. And I think a, a very important part of, of what we do here in the county. Um, we've had a holiday open houses in the county through the years and off and on. The chamber has usually done it. Um, we have folks that uh, regularly um, go to other places where they have holiday type uh, visits and open houses and see what, are, what goes on there and then come back to Clinton and do similar things in Clinton. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, one of the things that they came up with many years ago was uh, they changed the, the kinds of Christmas lights that we have in the county uh, based on the way, well, the main, I think the main place that they had been that they brought this back from was uh, down at Nashville around the Opryland Hotel, the type of lights they had there, and they brought some that idea back and changed some of our Christmas lights in town to those. But this at this year of 2021, we decided as a committee that we'd have a, a holiday open house, and it would be different in that uh, when we would go from place to place, it was like a progressive dinner. You go here for soup. Actually, you go here for mince, you go here for soup, you go here for a uh, main meal, you go here for dessert, etc. From, from the different places. <clears throat> and here at the center, uh, we, we did um, punch and mince and nut. And I was really surprised. I thought we might have 15 people. Uh, I, I know because they signed in that we had at least 68 and I think there were a few more that filtered through that didn't sign in, so we may well have had 75 people to come through this facility that night, which I still can't get over, that we had that many people to actually come through. Uh, and especially given the fact that that, was, that year was the year of COVID, but uh, we were very excited to have all our visitors. <clears throat> Other stops on the trail for this open house were the Heatman County Museum, the Belmont, uh, which is a, a venue down at Columbus, close to the park. Iron Banks, which is at Columbus. Harper House, which is Lieutenant Governor Harry Waterfield's home that is now owned by uh, Amy Harper Hogenkamp, and it's called the Harper House, and it's a bed and breakfast at this point. The Perry House, uh, one of our citizens in the county, um, did some study, studying in culinary arts. I think most of it was at West Kentucky Technical College at Paducah. <clears throat> but she came back and her grandmother's house was empty out around Spring Hill, Kentucky. And she opened up the Peary house. That was her grandmother's last name, Miss Ruth Peary. And uh, she, she often has uh, luncheons that she caters for people and things like that. Uh, Relatively often, the circuit judge has the uh, Bar Association to meet there for lunch and things like that. So they stopped by her house. And then the cabinet, Bell, Bellwood, which is um, Carolyn Bones' 
uh, residence that Bellwood is. Um, and so people went from place to place. And one of the funny things that happened that night, we had you know, kind of did the map, you know, you start here, you go to the museum, and then you go. Well, we had quite a few people that started at the other end and came back, and instead of us being the first, we were the last. So the last shall be first, and the first shall be last. Uh, <coughs> advertisement was important, I think. Um, there were lots of folks, uh, local organizations, individuals that were posting things to Facebook and other websites to make people aware of what was going on, when it, when it was going to happen. Gay Vincini, the editor and publisher at the Times, was very generous in her coverage of the events. Uh, she kept a, 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 a block in her paper listing the events, the time, the place, all of them right down, and that was very, very helpful to us. I'm back to Sherry, my cousin. <clears throat> she started an article uh, about the time we we started uh, preparing to do this, uh, talking about the coming up bicentennial celebration. And she's continued that in our community since, <clears throat> excuse me, um, a real uplifting, this is out there, this is why Clinton and Hickman County are important. These are opportunities you had to be involved with the history of our county, those kind of things. And Gay continues to publish those pretty regular. Uh, and Gay has been very, very good to us here at our historical center. Uh, several of us write from time to time, and uh, she's always willing to publish it for us. So we get some uh, attention that way. Well, I'm going to make, not make, you know, it's supposed to be one. There we go. Um, <clears throat> my undergraduate degree is in, is in business administration, and so I, I I like talking about business and thinking about business. And one of the things that uh, I think is impo very important in our community and a lot of little communities around, we may not have that many people who live in our county, but as Brother Blair made the point one time, we have a, a million dollar mile that runs up through the county, Highway 51, and the millions of dollars worth of produce, uh, equipment, uh, big trucks that go up and down this street right in front of us here uh, brings a, a lot of traffic, not when it was when I was a child because of the interstate across the river, but still enough that it's millions of dollars that moves right here through Clinton and Hickman County. And uh, so that's, I like to say that we can do things like uh, this historical center for tourism dollars and we have some folks that come in fairly regularly uh, I have a third cousin in uh, California who I had never met who who uh, came to Heatman County to do some research on some of our common ancestors uh, she's from Southern California she's a professor out there and uh, uh, she has just been amazed at what we have here in this building and across the street in the county court clerk's office, etc. And so while she was here, she spent money here. When other visitors come through town and they stop at Clinton, they go over and eat lunch at, at Howell's or they uh, uh, buy something at one of the variety stores, which we don't have as many as we used to, uh, but they do things like that and spend money here, which helps our, helps our county. Uh, I'm gonna jump that the second uh, dot and go to the third of uh, the, sh the Chamber of Commerce sold t-shirts. I have mine on. Uh, <laughs> I was worried this morning whether it was going to be warm enough for me to wear this without <laughs> something else, but uh, it's been fine. Um, and they use that money with regard to, we, we've had some real issues to develop with the sidewalks around town. And uh, as I understand it, they use uh, at least some of that money from t-shirt sales to go in that direction. Uh, and by doing what we did, we hopefully increased activity around our town and county, which resulted in increased sales for various local businesses. And I think that's very important in my own mind. And then I'll drop back to the second one. With the financial help of the American Rescue Plan funds provided by our fiscal court for publishing costs, 
we sold 115 bicentennial books at $30, which made our society $3,450 in sales. And that's a lot of money to us, to be able to get that much money out of something. Uh, big places may think that's nothing, but for little old Clinton and Hickman County, that's, that's a lot that's of money. A lot of money. So. <laughs> <laughs> and so we're we're glad that we were able to do that uh, and I have one more slide and then I'm going to turn the lights back on because I'm going to come back more uh, the county provided us with this America Rescue Plan funds uh, I've been working fairly hard trying to get us some grants within the last couple of years I've never done it much I've been around it all of my working life uh, working with the county but I'm finding that can be a lot of work, mm -hmm. a whole lot of work. So uh, uh, anytime we can get any kind of uh, grant money like that, it's helpful. And it was helpful here because it paid for the publishing. Mm -hmm. We didn't have to pay the publisher. And then what money we got from the books was our money. I mean, it was net profit. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, so my last slide says a good time was had by all. <laughs> I'm not sure who came up with that saying. I meant to look it up because you hear it every once in a while. I had a former pastor, Bob Long, was here for a number of years, and he would say that pretty often, mm -hmm. I remember. And so I've I kept that in mind. And then I'm going to turn the lights back on. And uh, uh, I've asked LaDonna to recognize uh, some of our... Uh, local historians who are members of our society and talk to you just a little bit about the book that earned the $38 million. I don't have any slides like Tom does. <laughs> this comes right off the top of my head. <laughs> This is our book, and uh, we are really, really uh, pleased with it. We had uh, one, two, three, four, seven of us that worked on this book. We had seven weeks, I think, that we did it in because we had to have it to the publisher a long time before we really needed the book. So we really just jumped in and we met, we sat back here at one of the tables and we just kind of decided, we all talked together and we all decided, we made a list of things that we wanted in the book. Like we wanted church histories, people histories, we wanted, um, Special histories. We've got uh, Hitman County has a, a ship that's made uh, that is named for Hitman County, Kentucky. Um, agricultural uh, from 1821 <laughs> to 2021. Um, we just came up with all these things. We wanted something from every community in Hitman County. So what we did was, um, Pam, she took Spring Hill and Shiloh because that's where she lives. Tom did Clanton and Fulgham. Nisi and uh, Denise, <laughs> that's my cousin. <laughs> I slipped out, Nisi. <laughs> and Joe, they did uh, the one uh, on the agricultural part. They also did the part with um, the ships. Um, Linda Hudson, she's not here today. She did um, Rock Springs, uh, Beaverton, Jackson's Chapel. Um, I, I don't know. She did several. And I did Columbus. And... Beulah, St. Denis, up that direction. That's where I live. My brother, who's also a member, he's a jack of all trades, you might say, but he has kept us going in lots of places. He's electrician, or was electrician. 
He has done all the repair work in here that needs to be done. On the book, he did a lot of research for us. When we needed something that we couldn't find, you know, we knew it was here someplace we couldn't find, Johnny found it for us. So we just started writing. And we met, I guess, about every week. And, okay, how much have you got done? What do you need? Just went from there. When we got it all together, my brother, he took and put it on a junk drive because that's the way we have to take it to the printers. And this was the result of it. We come up with uh, several different... Um, I don't know, we all did it differently, and that's what's kind of interesting in the book because everybody did their section a little bit different. And uh, so it makes very interesting reading. And um, we had 150 books printed. We sold 115 within two months. So we have, and we have been selling some along so we are really pleased with it. Um, I hope, you know, this will give you all some ideas of what to do. Um, you can look at the book and see what's going on. Is there any questions or anything? They're still available? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So if you give, give, give me the information and I'll put it out on our Facebook page and we'll send an email to our members how they can order mm -hmm. it. Sure, be glad to. Yes. Yes. And we'd be, we'd be happy to help help you sell out their Good. copies. <laughs> the nice thing about printing today is you probably can get it reprinted at a fairly reasonable. Yes. They have it in their computer already. It, it's one thing that we have done. Excuse me. I didn't mean to. No. But Ian, um, one thing that we have done is my brother does all the printing here, like the journal. Of course, we have lots of books that we have, I have like four or five that I've written, and he has now gotten to where he can print those books, and he can use the spiral bound. Mm -hmm. We have a, one of those now, which we didn't at the time. So it has really cost, our costs have really gone down on lots of our books, because we had to send them to the publisher. Now... On most of these, we can do our own publishing because of... Well, of course, the cost of publishing has come, come down substantially. We, we've seen that with our journal. Uh, we send it off on the Internet, and it, it's 3 or $4 a, a copy less than it used to be. Well, we do our own copying, and all we're out of is postage and, of course, the cost of paper and things like that, but uh, we do our own. Uh, the lady, in fact, uh, Linda, she brought it yesterday for the next quarter, and uh, so, you know, we have really tried to cut down on a lot of our cost. So, turn it back to Tom. <laughs> a copy less than it used to be. Well, we do our own copying, and all we're out of is postage, and of course the cost of paper and things like that, but uh, we do our own. Uh, the lady, in fact, uh, Linda, she brought it yesterday for the next quarter, and uh, so, you know, we have really tried to cut down on a lot of our cost. So, turn it back to Tom. Because we wanted to get a banner, and, and Johnny really yeah. took the lead and got that done for us. He, uh, uh, he designed it, didn't he? Himself. Yes. And he brought us in here one day, and he had two or three or four banners that he could put up here for us to uh, to look at, and uh, this was the unanimous pick. 